Hello everyone, and welcome to Lawrence Plays for this week's Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 update, where we're going to have a look through what's been going on in space, what I've been putting together with the Vulcanite, and maybe if we have time we'll go on to looking into making some intermediaries as well. So firstly, let's take a look at uh, Mark's shenanigans with spaceships, and the big thing he's done this time is he's set up some massive blueprints for us to take, for us to have a look at and play around with. And so if we look over here in the blueprints menu, we've got the game blueprints. Down here we have a spaceport template, and we have an outpost uh, space station. And so the idea behind these is that we can just drop these in, well, one of them, one, this one in Norbit, and this one in wherever it is we're out building stuff up. And then it's got the instructions built into it, so in theory, uh, those of us who are a little hard of thinking, We'll know how to uh, get the whole thing set up, and in theory, we'll get, be able to get everything flying through. And there's even one as well here for the spaceship, with the, and again with some, some small instructions on there too. So let's have a look at the first one. So this is the one that we placed down in Norbit. So it's got it's got a system here that will hook into the train system up top and some various various belts and things. And the idea is that it can unload all of the resources that you've brought from your other planet, whether that's vulcanite or beryllium or stuff that other people have been doing. Uh, it'll all get unloaded into here and passed out. And we'll have a quick look through the uh, through the things you need to do. So for the first thing, looking at this, number one is request with negatives, and that's up that's up here. And the idea is that in here, from from this uh, signal receiver, you'll get a signal coming in from the remote out post saying we need more sulfur, we need more vulcanite, we need more space elevator cable, that's any of that sort of stuff. And it then gets filtered through these um, through these systems down here, uh, added on to whatever's in the warehouses, and then that can and then we can use that to request more of the more of whatever it is. So in theory you can request absolutely anything you want, and as long as the system the input system is set up properly, it will all be brought over, put into the spaceship, and brought out. You can then set, set a target ID. Now at the moment this target ID is set to sun number 999 and that is I believe supposed to be a sort of a null value. Uh, hopefully we don't have a star 999, maybe he's even checked it, who knows. And the idea, so basically you can come in here and you can program that up to make the spaceship go to the correct place. And for anyone who's not properly familiar with space exploration, do note that when you're setting one of these things up, you need to choose the, the, the correct signal for what you, what, where it's going. So you need to use this one if it's going to a star, this one for a planet or a planet orbit or a moon or a moon orbit or an asteroid belt or an asteroid field or apparently an anomaly so all in you need to make sure you use not only the correct number but the correct symbol as well and this is slightly counterintuitive because the numbers are all different but you need to know the difference between a planet and its orbit and also a moon and a moon's orbit but you can you can check check those by looking in the uh, the universe explorer and so for this one for example Nor Norvis is a planet it says so there whereas Drakit is a moon and it says so there so Norvis orbit is a planet orbit and so on so you can you can tell which one you need to select from there if you need to Anyway, back in here, where, where were we? So number three, connect the outputs. Yeah, so so we've got some outputs flowing down here, and got number three down here. And this is so so if you if if any of the, the resources are required on a different uh, spaceship to be taken away to somewhere else, you can feed them down here, and they'll be put onto this belt system. There's a little bus running along the bottom of here that can be then linked in to whatever other spaceships are around. So for example, vulcanite is the obvious example. Nearly everywhere needs vulcanite. So we've got the spaceship carrying the vulcanite in, dropping it off in orbit, and then some of it, yes, yeah, some of it will get put into the train system be taken off to wherever it's needed, but quite a lot of it will also flow down these belts to be then taken away by, by other spaceships that are going back out to different planets in order to keep them sub suitably supplied. We have a filter for number four. Ah, yes, that's up here. So when the uh, when when the resources pour out of here, you're going to have quite a lot of. Hopefully, you'll have a lot of whatever it is that's supposed to be being picked up. Maybe that's going to be vulcanite, cryonite, whatever. But you're also going to have a lot of, of, of sort of trash, miscellaneous resources. So that might be iron ore, it might be stone, it might be copper ore, all of those sort of things. They're all going to flow out as well. And so up here, we need to tell these loaders to only unload the, the core resource from this place. So maybe that's vulcanite. So you go in here, you change that on all four of them, and then just the vulcanite will pour up here. We'll go into this warehouse. And be loaded into the train. We've also got number five. We also need to program the resource in here with minus 10 million. And that, you've seen this sort of thing before, but the idea behind that is it feeds through, it feeds that minus 10 million through onto all of these and subtracts it from what's on, what's gone into this warehouse. And that ensures that these inserters, which are setting their filters from the, uh, from the warehouse contents, won't unload the main resource. They'll only unload the miscellaneous trash and also not the, uh, the dead batteries. So th those all get dumped out onto the uh, into this warehouse where they'll then get taken away by a different train. And the dead train batteries, and apparently scrap as well, will get put onto this belt here, flow up here, and disappear off onto the scrap belt to be taken away and recycled. Now, I believe I feel like that means if we've got scrap specified on these inserters, we should also be specifying a not scrap on here, so a ten, minus 10 million scrap. But that hasn't been programmed. I don't know whether that means it's not needed, or whether it just means that uh, Mark didn't think of it. But knowing Mark, I'm guessing the former. 
So that's number five. Number six is connect wire. So up here, this pylon with a red cable on it is supposed to be feeding out uh, when there's a when there's an emergency trigger in inverted commas. So basically, when there's too much resource in this in this warehouse here, and we want the emergency train to come over and pick it up and take it away. So that just gets clipped into the um, into the into the uh, in, into whatever pylon is up here and taken away to the rest of the system. That's nice and simple. Seven, you need to name the station. So at the moment, the station is probably called Go Away and Set My Name. Set me a name. Yeah, there we go. More or less correct. Set the spaceport name in here. So we set that. So you'd say that would be Vulcanite Pickup or Beryllium Pickup or whatever it is, whatever resource it is you're bringing in. So the trains know where to go. You also need to hook up the inputs. As I was saying, you can bring various different resources to your outpost through the spaceship system. And so those should, in theory, all be available on the bus system down here. And so you can link up up to four of them to these belts along here. Actually, it's up to eight of them because we've got two on this belt and two on this belt that everywhere is going to need. So presumably this is things like uh, elevator cable and meteor defense ammo. and those, those sort of things that everywhere wants. And then over here you can have another four that might be sulfur or vulcanite or cryonite, those sort of things. So we can fill the spaceship up with all the stuff you need out on the outpost and the system should know exactly how much to put through there. So along here these will all need to be configured as well. So you put in, if this was vulcanite here for example, you'd program this to be when vulcanite is less than zero and cryonite and, and, and so on. And then the signal comes down these cables down here to tell it when there's an insufficiency up here uh, and when there's an insufficiency out on the, on the, the, on the uh, outpost planet as well. You need to set the main um, resource here, so again that's the one you're bringing out from the outpost, and that's to make sure that the spaceship knows when it's been emptied. So if we've got a lot of vulcanite in here, for example, it's all been taken out. When if we, if we put a vulcanite one on here, we can say when vulcanite equals zero, you know the ship is empty, so you can put an extra pip on the output over here. And when you've got the right number of pips, the ship's ready to launch. The final thing to do is to set the uh, the clamp number over here, and each of these needs to be unique. You set it to 99,000 because that's a nice big number and makes it make sure it's, uh, it's not going to match anything else. And that makes sure that the ship will then dock in the correct place when it comes in, so you don't end up with a beryllium ship landing in the, uh, in the vulcanite drop-off and uh, upsetting everybody. Uh, he's put replace deconstruction planner with resource at the bottom here um, because all the places around here, the, 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 where you've got deconstruction planners in, in combinators, you need to come along, or, or in loaders, you need to come along and replace those with the resource that is relevant for this particular place. And you've got the checklist down here to make sure you do all the correct ones. So, as you won't be surprised to realise, he's, he's also built one for the loader stations as well, and these are the ones that you put out on the uh, on in your outposts. And again, it's very, very similar. You need to set the clamp ID so that the ship lands in the correct place. Uh, you need to set the target ID, which is by default is already set to what I assume is Norvis Orbit. I'd be very, very surprised if it's not. You need to set the input, uh, inputs over here. So this means you need to set the main resource that's going to be taken away from here to make sure that you're not going to be accidentally unloading the the vulcanite or whatever you're taking away into these into these warehouses to dump it out here you only want to unload the resources that the spaceship has brought to you and if you're trying to ship out anything else any other weird stuff you also need to go in and add those to the, num the things in here so for example if you're if you're shipping out barrels of pyroflux which is a thing that we're starting to do you need to make sure you come in here and you put in a minus 10 million pyroflux again to stop it unloading them. You then have to plug in your inputs down here, which will be all of the stuff you're bringing up from your planet, output, which is all the stuff you're taking down to your planet, and also put in the, oh, the fil set the filters up here as well. I missed, I skipped over step four, sorry about that. Um, you need to replace these fish with the various resources you want to have on the planet. So this, so maybe you'd make two of them into vulcanite and two of them into cryonite, or one of them into cryonite and one of them into sulfur, whatever it is you need in order to feed all those resources around to put them into your train to be taken back down again. So we've got to the point now where we've done this enough times that Marcus finalized his design and has now been able to therefore make these blueprints which means that in the future rather than going mark we need another spaceship sta station in Hermit Herman Hermit orbit he can go uh, we can just go in and get them from the blueprints or if we do go whinging to him like that he can say oh just go and look in the blueprints that's why I made them you noob uh, so so with them we're going to be more more than capable of setting them up ourselves these are small plastic text plates I would imagine that we don't have any of these available so when you drop one of these blueprints down in the real world quote quote as opposed to in the blueprint editor which we're in at the moment and none of this nonsense will get placed so um, it'll all appear as ghosts which will make it easy to get rid of afterwards. And following on from that thought, you can see here where we've been actually dropping these things out in the real world, as um, I say, in, in very, very inverted commas. And it looks like Mark has dropped down a couple of templates here. This is probably because I did hear him raging about um, Tristan putting one down in the wrong place. So I'm guessing he's put these additional templates down to make sure that people line them up properly so there's room for room for all the trains, room for everything. And yes, I was correct. See, these, these are appearing as ghosts. There's the small plastic text plates, but these large plastic text, pla text plates are actually being placed. So we can put in a label across here that says where the spaceships are going to. And so we've got a nice set of them now. We, we're, doing, we're doing quite well. Talos is still an old old version, so probably at some point this will be upgraded to be the new design, the new type of spaceships, just 
the new and improved everything. But then across here we've got Agnea where we're bringing in loads of Vulcanite. We've got Kothar which will be bringing in Iridium. Snowdrop for the uh, for the Cryonite. Uh, Njord for Holmium? Njord for Holmium I think. Bigrid for all of the, um, the, the bio stuff. And that's going to be a bit weird because I don't know. I'm not sure because there, there are so many different things. And if you see over here, Mark has set this one up to be doing lots and lots of different types of bio stuff. So I will be interested to find out how he's planning to balance all of this stuff. But we'll find that out later because I'm sure it's going to be here. Uh, it's going to be something he'll tell us all about. And then there's a couple of spare ones over here, as I said. So this is working. Yes, this is working very, very nicely. We're getting, getting our spaceships up and running. And they're working well. And continuing thinking about uh, Mark's uh, spaceships and, and, and stuff. Well, we can see over here he's got his um, he's got his spaceship installed in in orbit above Big Red. He's working on his um, uh, uh, meteor defense system, but that's fine. Oh, that's a loader. All right, okay, I see. So he's, he's got a lo loader filling up this one. Then they're being passed through by inserters and then through by loader over here because it's a, a longer distance. I I see what he's doing there. Uh, so yes, this is this is a big grid ship that has not been f fully uh, fully set up yet. And if we look down here on big grid, you can see this is clearly a work in progress. He's got the bottom end of his elevator here, but hasn't actually linked it up to it, linked up to the railway system at all. And there's nothing being fed in over here. So yeah, work in progress. But I'm sure that'll that'll be something that'll come together in the future. On a very very similar note, this is over in Njord. So um, these all of our spaceports are going to look very very similar. I'm afraid uh, they're all going to have a ship like this and um, just different levels of stuff being finished around them. So here we've got yes, Tristan's. Tristan's followed my design where he's got a sh he's got his train dropping off all of the resources up here, except he hasn't because it's still full of um, rare metals, copper, coal, and uh, uranium ore. So those all need to be actually emptied out. So he needs to he needs to come up with do something with all of these um, unloaders over across here. But that's fine. Work well, you know, they're all works in progresses. And then once that's emptied, it can drop back down to Njord. Right down here, we've got the same little loop sort of system. And here we've got a warehouse that's gradually filling up with stuff. And this is all the stuff you want to take back up to uh, to Njord bit. Uh, Njord bit, uh, you, can, you have to hear the J sound in there when I say Njord bit as opposed to uh, Norbit, which is entirely, an entirely different place. Uh, yeah, so he's got a very, very small amount of Holmium actually making its way through. Presumably that means he's short of either Cryonite or Vulcanite over here. Um, and those aren't being brought in in sufficient quantities. That might mean he needs to give the spaceship a kick. Or it might mean there's some other, other sort of problem. But yes, once he gives the spaceship a kick, it can, from the other end in Norbit, yes, it, it is now capable of bringing out um, uh, Vulcanite, Meteor Defense Ammo, sure, Cryonite, and Plastic, because apparently those are things he needs out there. So what he's probably going to do is once, the, uh, once all of the supplies are sufficiently healthy, he's going to send his spaceship over here to get a load more of these resources, fly back out there, fill up all his buffers, maybe fly back and forth a couple of times without filling this spaceship up completely. We'll, we'll see how he gets on. In general, he's going to need to run his spaceship over here a couple of times, then fly back out to Njord in order to get all of the intermediate resources that he needs to make the, uh, make the Holmium, so the, the Vulcanite and the Cryonite and the Plastic, essentially. He's been doing similar things with the uh, the ship on Snowdrop, so the idea is that this will bring out enormous quantities of cryonite, and there is uh, 16 stacks of it in here, so it's not an enormous quantity yet, but, you know, working towards it. And over here, he's going to be feeding in all the different bits and pieces that are needed uh, out on Snowdrop, which is apparently uh, just, just the basics at the moment. And it makes sense that you don't need any of the uh, other re re uh, exotic resources in order to make cryonite, because cryonite is one of the sort of the early ones that you need in order to make all of the exotic metals. So much like vulcanite, if you needed that to make the later ones, then you you'd have a sort of a requirements loop and you'd never be able to make anything. But this seems to be coming together quite nicely if we're looking out here on uh, on, on Snowdrop Orbit, Snorbit if you will. Um, it seems to be pulling through quite a lot of stuff here. We've got the, the warehouses filling up nicely with all of the uh, the stuff that's just been brought up by the train. Uh, what what have we got on the ship here? Let's 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 sort that and have a look. So there's a little bit of coal, load of stone, lots of sand because that stacks up to 200. Uh, we've got iron ore, copper ore, rare metals, uh, uranium ore and pyroflux, but no, interestingly, no cryonite. And I think I know why that is. Let's go, let's drop down to Snowdrop and have a quick look. And I suspect yes, that's because the uh, the output of all of the cryonite um, goes to all of the delivery cannons first, and then goes down to the spaceship. So the spaceship is currently just getting the junk, the trash that we want to get rid of. It's not getting the stuff that we actually want because that's being fed into, into the, de the delivery cannons are swallowing all of that up to send it out to all of the other places it's needed, like uh, look, Norbit. Norvis, Norbit, Norbit, Norvis, Nor Njord, Talos, Bigrid, Norbit, and Norbit. So all the Norbit ones should probably be turned off and just be, t be t told to sort of be a, bit, a, little, a little bit more patient and wait for a spaceship to actually turn up. But then on the flip side, they're all, they also might be fairly important, so maybe we don't want to do that. It's rather difficult. I had the same problem with the Vulcanite, of not knowing when to turn the cannons off. So I sort of sidestepped it by um, just building up more and more and more and more supply, leaving a lot of the original stuff going to the uh, delivery cannons, but, but all having all of the new new supply going to the spaceship, so I've managed to get a bit more out. Um, 
I guess that basically means that Snowdrop needs a huge expansion of the amount of cryonite it's producing. And I think I talked about that last week. I said that, uh, yes, out here Tristan has gone out and, and tapped a fair number of core seams. I say a fair number, it looks like about five or six. Um, there are a lot more that could be tapped, and also there are a lot of these big patches out here of actual cryonite ore that could just be fed in into more, into further, um, further production systems. These could run a lot faster if we had more uh, more crushed cryonite coming in. These could run faster if we. Oh no, they they do they are beaconed already. They could run they could run a lot faster because they're only running on. Um, uh, they've got a lot of efficiency modules in them, um, so we could get a, yeah if we could get a lot more stuff flowing in here, a lot more cryonite ore flowing through in order to make actual cryonite. Then, then we maybe we'd have enough to fill up, the, start to fill up the spaceship, and that, and then then things would be a lot better. Because at the moment, cry, cryonite does seem to be the stumbling block for at least, well, at least what I'm trying to work on. So I'd appreciate it if Tristan could upgrade that a bit. <laughs> Speaking of, I spent quite a lot of time monitoring the uh, the ship that's in orbit over Talos. That's this this one up here, um, and because uh, I wanted, to, I was just trying to work out whether it was feasible to bring in all of the resources that are needed. And we talked about that last time in the last set of videos. And I think we decided that it was just about feasible. The problem is that there's that uh, one of the things we need here is cryonite, and we just don't have enough of that. So down here, you can see that the, the ship has flown back and forth, and I think I eventually gave it a nudge and made it fly over with just what it had found. And we've already run out of cryonite. Now we have, there are a couple of options here. One is just to leave this system asleep until until we have the cryonite we need to process it all. Another one is to start pulling it in through the delivery cannon again here. So I could extend this, um, this the, a belt from here that can, could run all the way down here and feed in at the bottom down here somewhere as a, as a lower priority. I'm kind of loath to do that though because I feel like that's just taking the existing problem and making it worse. So there's already not enough cryonite coming out of Snowdrop in order to get get any out to the uh, to the spaceship. It's all being eaten by the delivery cannons. So if I make the delivery cannons eat even more by sending some out here, then it's yeah, it's it's just making it worse. So what I should probably do is pull up a lot of this, but actually but take out the cryonite from here, put it into the system because 2200 is a reasonable amount. It'll keep the stuff running for a little while. Um, and then maybe just stop requesting anything to come in here and get rid of this. I, I, I don't know, because we do also have, I think we have a fair amount of beryllium available, although I have to admit I'm, I'm, I'm honestly not sure about that. So, yeah, it's, it's difficult. I don't really know what to do here, because we kind of, on the one hand, we kind of need um, beryllium if we're going to do astroscience and building of spaceships. On the other hand, we don't want to make the the cryonite problem any worse than it already is. So I think I'll just leave this until until anyone complains or until we notice there's any sort of issues. Um, and hopefully Tristan will have the cryonite up and running at a at a higher rate of knots within within the next week or two. So from cryonite, I feel like logically the next thing to talk about is vulcanite because that's you know hot and cold rocks. And uh, this was my big project for uh, this week was getting the vulcanite processing up and running and just going just going as well as possible or as well as reasonably possible. So uh, I've done a number of things. Um, last I think last week we had one maybe two of these these processing systems set up. So I added in another one. I brought us up to three. I do still want to rip out a load of this and bring it up to four of the of the modernised version. But at the moment it's not too bad because at least we've at least got the uh, tier 3 productivity modules in here so we won't actually we're not actually losing out on any productivity we're just wasting a bit of ups a bit of space a bit of that sort of thing because this is this is bigger and has more machines than we strictly need it to once we move on to the better beacons and the better machines as you can as you can clearly see over here the big problem i had with the uh, with the vulcanite production was getting enough sulfur over and so at one point we did have sulfur being brought in by the uh, by the spaceship dropped off dropped off by the train here it was going into this warehouse i think and then being poured up here across here and in, into the into the processing from there that's that was i mean it was it was sort of okay it kind of technically works the problem is that if we look over in norbit the amount of sulfur that's being brought in over here is not not there's not a great deal it's being brought in by a sushi train from 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 the ground and then brought and then trickled over here into, into the warehouses passed up over to the to whichever areas need it so it was it was being brought to Agnair. i've since cut that off but the problem is that it's also not being produced in particularly large quantities down on Norvis, and we were having some problems there. I think these have been at least partially fixed, so we, if we go and have a look, I'll probably be this will probably be spoilers for tomorrow's video. But we had over here a quantity of sulfur was being produced, and it was woefully insufficient. We were getting through, getting through this. There are so many places that require sulfur that we were absolutely ripping through it, and even even worse. The, the train that's bringing it up over here, whichever one it is, I uh, I think it's probably this one, um, just wasn't bringing it up in large enough quantity. So so it wasn't it wasn't realistic to use the the uh, the feed of sulfur we've got here to bring out the sheer quantities of it that are required on Agnea. 
So, my uh, my short term fix for this, and when I say short term fix, it's probably actually going to be quite a long term fix. Um, is to is to, was to start making the uh, the sulfur much much faster over here, which I did by dropping in productivity modules and a wide area beacon. So this area is now running ludicrously quickly. As to be honest, are these um, the, these glass making machines down here that aren't in use at all, but they, they would be running much faster if they did. Um, so this is now making massive quantities of petroleum gas and massive quantities of sulphur, both of which are needed for the uh, process for the processing of the vulcanite. And so now over here, with all this all these ridiculous speed modules in here, we, we we're absolutely churning through the oil. But we're making massive, massive quantities of sulphur, which can then be piped over here, through here, and as you can see, it is enough. Uh, looking at the, looking at this belt, yeah, okay, both sides of the belt are moving a bit. We're getting, so we're getting through, we're getting through quite a lot of sulphur here. It's more than half a belt, but it's not, it's not, a, it's not an unmanageable amount. I reckon I could probably put in another two of these, these things here, here, and it would still be absolutely okay on the single belt coming through. And that's something I might consider doing as well. But we'll, we'll we shall see. Over here we have 1.1 million crude oil plus another 653, so, so 1.75 million, that's a lot of crude oil. I think this is going to keep us going for quite a long time. Uh, so we're going to keep churning through this for now, as long as this hangs on. And then to be honest, there's another 1.6 million down here as well, so to be honest, I suspect this might actually be enough. Let's, uh, let's put the numbers up on screen to show how much uh, sulphur you can make from 1.75 million um, oil. As you can see, it's quite a lot, I and, how, and how, actually beyond that, how much vulcanite we can make from it as well. So as you can see, that's going to keep us going for quite a while, I think. And at the moment, product, production is in the region of three, three to three and a half thousand per minute. So that's quite, I mean, that's quite a lot, but I, th I still think we're going to be okay for a good long time. Again, numbers on screen. <laughs> um, However, if it turns out to be a problem, my, my plan beyond that is to set up an outpost on Aereo, which is the oily, oily moon, so there's loads of crude oil on there, and have that ship up sulphur in enormous quantities to, uh, to, to Aereo orbit, um, Aereo, Aereo orbit, whatever, whatever we're going to call that, and then potentially, if necessary, I can have a spaceship stop off there, fill up with sulphur very, very quickly from somewhere that has a crazy supply of it, and then fly on to, uh, to, to Agnea or Talos or wherever in order to drop that off. And since is going to Norvis orbit anyway, it's going to be almost no um, diversion to, to pick it up from there. And with it being so specialised, we'll be able to have a much, much higher supply coming up than we would from Norvis, um, simply because we don't need to worry about building around what we've already got. Sadly, it doesn't have an enormous amount of coal, so we're probably not going to be able to make plastic there, which is a bit of a shame, um, but that was just something I thought, I thought, I thought I'd check on while I, was, uh, while I was thinking about it. I should probably also admit, because if I don't, then Tristan will call me out on, the, on it in the comments, <laughs> that I made a bit of a mistake with Agnea when I was trying to cut off the sulphur supply. So you can see down here, I've, I have now, I've cut it off here, so it's not, there's none, none of it is going to be fed in, no matter what the signals are saying. But my first thought was to go, well, we don't care about sulphur in Agnea, We're not, we don't need to ship any of that out, so I'll just turn off the request for it up here. Or, well, not here, but at the other end, the signal that's coming in here. Unfortunately, that meant that all of these inserters over here went, oh, he doesn't need sulphur on this planet anymore, and they immediately started unloading the sulphur from the ship into these warehouses, so it ended up flowing up here, and then potentially would flow round here and go into the uh, into the disposal system. And we don't really want to put sulphur into the disposal system. The problem was, this, this system is so fast and efficient that by the time I'd stopped panicking and worked out what had happened, there was about 3,000 in there, and by the time we'd stopped it being pouring out of the spaceship, there was about 5,000. So we put in an additional belt coming out of here, fed it round, back round here, and put it back into the ship. And we said, right, okay, we'll take this one last load of sulphur round, but we'll cut it off down here so that we don't feed any more in here. And that, and so now we probably are still requesting sulphur over here. Let's find out if we are. Uh, no, it looks like that has actually been turned off. So we, we are no longer requesting sulphur. But at, um, for a little while, we were requesting it, even though it wasn't able to supply it. But that was fine. Further adventures on Agnea involve putting in another um, vulcanite mine here. So we, I, I added in this railway line that goes do, 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 down here in order to speed things up a little bit. Oh look, there's even more oil. 3.3 million. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to need to bother with Aereo, um, except perhaps for Talos. Uh, so I put in another mine here. That's another place for trains to pick up the ore from, uh, like this. However, um, there isn't. I think there isn't enough throughput, and I think it's probably because there just aren't enough trains trying uh, places where trains can go to, and it takes a while for them to fill up. So while that one's I say it takes a while for them to fill up. It's filled up very, very quickly. Now that the train has left the station here, this one can then start heading down this way. I probably need another turny roundy point in here. Um, but the point is, I think I poss possibly need more um, more vulcanite pickup, more vulcanite mines, in all, in, just simply because I need more vulcanite pickup stations. Because we are absolutely ripping through the vulcanite ore up here. So you can see there's this, this warehouse emptied, which is why there's a gap on the belts here. And we don't really want it to do that, because if it empties, then the machine, the system over here goes on, uh, pauses for a moment, and we don't want that. 
over here, yeah, it got down to a couple of hundred before we started to fill it back up again. So that was in risk of uh, emptying as well. So in order to, get, to keep all of this flowing as well as we can, we need to keep poking these things. And also, why is this stopped? Have we got a back? Have we backlogged on um, resources here again? We shouldn't have done. I should. This should all be fixed up nicely. Right, okay, the problem is here, we've got too much copper, because this is set to only load copper in when there's minus 50, this is set to output minus 100. So that means these inserters will unload this if there's less, if there's more than 100 copper in there, but these will only load if there's, if there's less than 50, so we never get to that point. So actually we need to probably just disable that. Actually no, we probably shouldn't just disable it, we should probably enable it and say if that's less than... To be honest, we don't care about this anymore. We just want to dump all of the uh, all the resources straight into here. We do, so I think actually, I'm, yeah, I am going to turn this one off. Mark is going to be very sad because I'm fiddling with his systems, and that's how things get broken. But never mind. We're not really we're not using this quite so much anymore. And the, and we do want to get rid of excess copper. Now I think here possibly let's make this minus 500 copper and minus 500 iron because both of those do get used for other things. We're turning the iron into steel, which we're then using to make. Um, make barrels over here which we're using to get rid of excess pyroflux. So mostly by delivery cannon at the moment that needs to get dumped into the uh, into the spaceship to be disposed of. But we need yeah, we need iron to come out this way to be made into the steel and into the barrels. And we need we want to hang on to the copper in case it's just in case it's needed in general. Everything else can just be dumped out out here and then flow merrily down the disposal chute over here and be taken away. There is a lot of stuff coming around the disposal chute. Speaking of the trains, I've added in several more of them in order to get them get it flowing better. And as part of that, I've also put in an additional waiting point over here, which I've gone significantly over the top with. But the idea of this is that as trains are coming up from this mine, they can wait in this one. If they're coming from this mine, they can wait in this one. And then hopefully they'll head round to the stations reasonably quickly. Now, as you can see, the stations have room for two trains in each, with the idea being that a train will come in uh, as, soon, as soon as this train empties and goes off somewhere else, and there'll be another train ready to, to scoot in there and unload immediately. Um, but we don't have enough trains, and we don't have enough loading places. So we're going to need to... I think we, this is why I think we need more of these mines, because at the moment this, this train is probably stuck here. Yes, this train is currently stuck here because it doesn't have a mine to go to. As soon as one of these mines becomes free... A train, a train will head off to it, but maybe I need to have maybe I need to have lo um, stackers on the inputs to these mines. Unfortunately, there isn't room, really room for it on this one. It's going to be a little bit fiddly to put it in. But I think both these stations need need stackers for them, and possibly I still need to put in another another uh, vulcanite mine as well. So there is definitely room for improvement here on the flow of the uh, the vulcanite coming through. It's basically okay at the moment, but it's only just about basically kind of okay-ish, sort of. So some improvements are required. Up, up, for, up in um, Agonair orbit, so just up in space from here, I've made some significant improvements to the unloading for the train. So instead of having two loaders unloading, we've now got four loaders unloading and dumping straight into this warehouse. So we can then pass all that through. And that was because at one point, when the, when the system was running absolutely flat out, the limiting factor felt like it was how quickly the train was unloading up here. Um, and that's that's not what we want. We want the train to unload nice and quickly so it can come back down and get some, get some more stuff to put in it. Um, at the moment, yeah, you can see the train is now full. We've got all the res Oh, no, it's not quite full. There's still, still a bit of resource flowing into this one. I've also put in more belts around here so the train will load up more quickly. Because, yeah, when, when we only had, I think it was four belts feeding in and eight belts feeding out of it, the tra this, this warehouse was starting to fill up. And that was a crazy position to be in. I needed to get more bandwidth, more, more throughput on the train. And I could have put in a second train, and I will do that if we start to have problems again. But for the time being... Having, just increasing the number of belts, loading and unloading the train, has sorted it out quite nicely. Um, and there we go, the train is full. Now the train the train is full, but it won't actually leave, we've talked about this system before, but it won't leave until these belts up here are full, because that's how we, te how we tell the train that it's full. Because if, we, if we have a look at this one, you can see it's not actually technically full, because there's room for another 195 sand, there's room for another 74 vulcanite, there's room for another um, 32 copper ore, and possibly so on, and yeah, and more, more raw metals and uranium ore. So the train is never going to actually be full, uh, but it's going to sit here now, as these belts back up, and then as soon as this one fills up, up here, the train should leave more or less immediately. Well, maybe after a couple of seconds. There it goes. And it will now run up to Agnair orbit, like that. And we can then unload it here very, very quickly. We can start shoving the stuff into the spaceship. And if we look at this spaceship, we'll see that actually this, this spaceship is fairly close to full. We're, we're looking at uh, about 450 stacks uh, per, per warehouse, roughly. Uh, so there's only a little bit more loading left to be done here. There might even there's probably going to be just about enough in this train to actually fill it up. And then once it's full, you'll see it, dep it automatically depart and head over to Norbit to drop off the Vulcanite over there. And I'll fast forward a bit so you can we can, we can watch it do this, and then we'll talk about the uh, what's going on at the other end as well. 
I think it's worth talking about the Vulcanite in quite a lot of detail, even if it's a bit, possibly a little bit much, because it has it, it, all of the other systems are going to run in basically the same way. So if we can have the, if, we, if I can demonstrate how the Vulcanite system works, then you'll understand all of the other ones, because as I say, it's, it's all more or less the same system. One of the things I quite like about this loading system we've got going on here is they're all, they all pull from the, uh, the last stack in the warehouse. So you get this lovely stripey effect going on as they, uh, as they all empty the, uh, the resources out into, to, put, to put them into the spaceship. And if we look along here, you can see, yeah, we've got 480, 477, 500 rows. This one's completely full now. Uh, it's just these two need a little bit of topping off. And through the magic of editing, you can now watch the uh, spaceship depart. Just like that. And spaceship departure is triggered, as I might have mentioned before, by monitoring the um, the inserters down here. And when they all go idle, and there's something in the system over here, in these warehouses, then the spaceship will depart. Now, notably, that means we've sent a ship off that's slightly less full than it could have been, because there's, um, there's a load of vulcanite and stone and sand in here that could have gone into these warehouses up here, could have fed through into the, could have been put through into the ship. Um, it doesn't really matter because the ship was very, very full when it departed, but that is, is a possible slight problem with the uh, with the system. So the ship then heads off from Magnea, it'll fly around, it'll come over to Norbit orbit. And when it gets to Norbit, it can then unload all of that stuff that it was carrying, pass it out, out here onto the into the um, into the systems I was discussing earlier. So as you as you can see once again, all the um, all the trash, all of the sort of the miscellaneous resources are getting passed out up to this warehouse up here where they can uh, where they can be put into a train. And when some Vulcanite finally makes its way out finally finds its way out of the ship, and there is quite a lot in here, we just seem to be unloading everything else first for some reason. Um that's that's quite a weird pattern, but okay then, sure. Once it does finally unload the Vulcanite, that'll be passed out to here, where it'll go into a Vulcanite train. The Vulcanite train, I discussed how these work last week, but I'll, I'll, I'll touch on it very, very briefly. The train can go from here out either to the, uh, the various, uh, any Vulcanite stations up here, or if it's being requested down on Norvis, it will alternatively drop down onto Norvis and run round to uh, to here, where it can unload and pass it out on into the in, in, into the station up here. And at the moment we have 75,000 uh, in, in this warehouse, which is quite a lot to be quite honest with you. Um, and that means, and with it, with it um, and then from so from there it can then be unloaded out into the into the uh, into the ground level trains, which will then take it off to wherever it's needed. However. I did a little bit of looking around for this one, and I discovered that the main place that the, uh, that, that, that is needed is up here at the Vulcanite Pickup. Um, and unfortunately, this station is called Vulcanite Pickup, not Vulcanite Drop. So let's change the name of this one. Vulcanite Block Drop, that one. Um, and tell this train to get lost. Go to Vulcanite Pickup. There we go. So now the train will head off over there. And so I noticed this this area over here is this is where we're producing all the pyroflux that's required for doing all of the uh, all the smelting that we do down on Norvis. And it's quite a good it's, it's a pretty good system. We've got we've got low, all these machines over here producing it. The problem is at the moment the only pyroflux that we're getting is the stuff that's coming out of the barrels because that train was broken. So, we need to fix that train. Then we'll have enormous quantities of pyro of, of vulcanite being brought in here, being dumped through the system. And when I let it run earlier and just watched it out of curiosity, we, we were we were bringing the vulcanite over fast enough for this system to run uh, f absolutely flat out and fill these tanks up but it took about four loads for this of this train in order to make the entire factory down here satisfied and that took pretty much all of the um all of the pirate, all of the Vulcanite that we've managed to bring over to uh, to Agnea from Agnea so far, all 52, 53, 54, however many thousand of it there are up here, plus all the stuff on the ground. So, I think there's a there was a there was a problem down there. It has swallowed up all of the Vulcanite that has been produced. However, I think the rate we're producing Vulcanite at is basically okay. There are just some buffers to fill up. So we'll leave that running. It'll probably be able to catch up reasonably well, and I think things are going to go quite nicely. And so, despite saying earlier that I was going to uh, talk, talk a bit about making intermediaries um, later in, in the video, I think I'm actually going to leave those for tomorrow, because this video is already fairly long, and I think it's probably going to be better to, to, save, to save it and try and, keep, try and keep the two of them reasonably even. So, thank you very much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed it. We will be back, uh, I'll be back tomorrow with the second half of this, uh, of this update, and then we'll be back on Monday when we'll carry on uh, with the next stream, and we're doing all the things I've been talking about today, and making everything run be bigger, better, faster, and stronger. After that, I shall be back on Wednesday with the XCOM stream. Uh, things are going quite well. I'm really enjoying XCOM, so I've started to make videos of it as well. So check those out when they come out on Tuesdays. Um, oh, and finally, um, in September, I'm going to be shuffling the schedule around a bit. So uh, Factorio streams are going to start being on Thursdays, with XCOM streams happening on Tuesdays. And the videos, still, the videos will still be released over the weekend, but with a, hopefully with a little bit more of a space between them. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Everything will still be carrying on on the channel, just on different days, to keep you guessing. <laughs> um, so, as ever, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this and we'll see you tomorrow. And uh, goodbye.